How you doing guys, welcome to another video. These videos are on topic one and we look at the mold concept in these videos. So topic one, volume three, what is Avogadro's number? We need to know what Avogadro's number is and we also need to know what is a mole. The IB understandings and applications uh, the mole is a fixed number of particles and refers to an amount of substance. We need to look at the solutions of some problems. So we need a calculator and a data book for these videos. And the text ref is page 14 to 20. Check it out. So here I have three different samples. 12 grams of carbon, 18 grams of water and 180 grams of sugar. In the carbon, we have just carbon atoms. In the water, we have H2O molecules. And in the sugar, we have sugar or glucose molecules. Now, the one important thing about this is they each contain what we describe as one mole of substance. We have one mole of carbon atoms in 12 grams of carbon. We have one mole of water in 18 grams of water. And we have one mole of glucose molecules in 180 grams of sugar. Now the mole gives us a way of working out how many grams of something we need so that we can actually physically measure it out. It allows us to make it possible to calculate a mass of how much we need for one mole. So one mole is equal to 6.02 times 10 to the 23 particles, atoms, ions, molecules, whatever it may be, but one mole is 6.02 times 10 to the 23. So a dozen was a convenient way of buying eggs. We say we have one dozen eggs, which is 12. But for atoms and molecules, which are much, much smaller, we needed a much bigger number. So chemists worked with this theory of the mole um, being the unit and we knew that one mole has 6.02 times 10 to the 23 particles. So the definition of a mole is something that you must know. It's the amount of substance that contains the same number of specified particles as there are in 12 grams of carbon-12. Remember that one atom of carbon-12 has a relative atomic mass of 12, and one mole of carbon atoms has a mass of exactly 12 grams. The number of particles in one mole is given the symbol Na or L, and that is described as Avogadro's number. That number can be found in the data book, but you will use it so frequently that it is one that you will remember. The amount in mole is given the symbol little n, and its units are in mole. So we have two quantities, big N and little n. Now, when we go to talk about the number of moles of things, we might talk about the number of moles of molecules, atoms or ions. And students sometimes get confused with a few of these. So I've got three bins here. And what we're going to go through and do is put the, the symbols into the right spot. So here we've got neon. Neon consists of atoms. CH4, that consists of molecules. Oxygen, well, that's an element, so does it go in the atoms? We know it goes in the, in the molecules. It's an O2 molecule. N2 is the same. It's an N2 molecule. Na plus a sodium ion. Ar is an atom. And then very quickly, we've got silver atoms, zinc ions, and sugar molecules. So we can describe those as molecules, atoms, or ions. Understanding the mole allows us to calculate the number of particles in a given amount of substance. And they will use the terms a given amount, and that means mole. So we have this formula, N equals N times Na. Na, or L, is Avogadro's number. Little n is the number of mole. And big N is the number of particles. Think of that as a counting number. How many do we have? So for example, Calculate the number of O2 molecules in 1.5 mole of oxygen. So the number of O2 molecules, that's meaning find big N. They've given us an amount in mole, so that's little n. So the way we write this, and the setting out is important, 
big N in brackets, the thing we want to find, O2, equals N times NA. The number of moles was 1.5, which has two significant figures, multiplied by Avogadro's number, which has three significant figures. When we multiply two things together, we take the number with the least significant figures. So I have 9.0 times 10 to the 23, accurate to two significant figures. Keep the numbers in your calculator, round them at the very end. Second example, calculate the number of atoms in 0.45 mole of copper. So again, we want big N, the number of atoms. We want to work that out. We've been given an amount in mole. So we have big N, the thing we want to find, copper equals N times NA. Sub in our value for mole, 0.45. Again, two significant figures. Multiply that by Avogadro's number, and then we'll answer this to two significant figures. Again, doing our rounding before we write the answer. 2.7 times 10 to the 23 atoms. Okay, so a couple of more difficult examples. We're going to use the same formula. Calculate the number of Fe3 plus ions in a 0.02 mole sample of iron 3 oxide. So the first thing that we need to do here is we need to know the formula for iron 3 oxide. Fe2O3. So what does that mean? Well, that means that for every one molecule of Fe2O3, we have two iron ions. So the first thing we need to do is calculate the number of Fe2O3 molecules, which is N times Na, 0 0.02 times Avogadro's number. Again, I've got two significant figures as my smallest, so I'll express my answer to two significant figures. So 1.2 times 10 to the 23, and this would be molecules. Now to work out the number of Fe ions, I need to look at the formula. The ratio between Fe and Fe2O3 is for every one molecule, we have two iron ions. So it's a two to one. So I have double the amount of Fe3 plus ions as I do compared to molecules. So to work out the number of Fe3+, I need to multiply the number of molecules by 2, which will give me the number of Fe3+, ions. 2.4 times 10 to the 21 ions. The 2, because for every one molecule, we have 2 Fe ions. If we were looking at the oxygen, we would have to multiply that one by 3, because there are 3 oxygens per molecule. Methanoic acid has the formula HCOOH. If a sample contains 2.35 times 10 to the minus 3 mole of carbon, how many mole of hydrogen are present? So a slightly different question where we don't actually use the formula. They've told us the number of carbon atoms in mole, 2.35 times 10 to the negative 3. Now what we need to do is use a ratio from the formula to try and calculate the number of moles of hydrogen. Now the ratio of the atoms in this formula is 2 to 1 to 2. That's the ratio between hydrogen, carbon and oxygen. So if we need to find the number of moles of hydrogen, then the ratio between carbon and hydrogen is 2 to 1. So I need to double the amount in mole of carbon to work out the amount in mole of hydrogen. So it becomes 2 times 2.35 times 10 to the minus 3. I've got three significant figures here in uh, my number of moles, so I could write this to three significant figures. 4.70 times 10 to the negative 3 mole. How many molecules of oxygen are present in this sample? Okay, to figure out how many molecules of oxygen, the first thing I need to do is find the number of moles. So the ratio between oxygen and hydrogen is the same. So it's one to one. 
So the number of moles of oxygen is 4.7 times 10 to the minus 3 moles, 1 to 1 ratio. The question asks us how many molecules, so that's big N. So to work out big N, I need to do mole times Avogadro's number. Again, showing my setting out, big N in brackets equals number of moles times Avogadro's number, and that will give me the number of oxygen atoms. And I think it should be atoms, not molecules, because this thing already is a molecule. So it should be number of atoms of oxygen. Okay, a couple more just to finish this volume off, a few more examples. This time, we've transposed the formula to give us a different equation, this time with the number of moles, the subject. So if we need to calculate the number of mole, we can do the number of atoms or ions divided by Avogadro's number. So calculate the amount in mole of 2.3 times 10 to the 23 hydrochloric acid molecules. So here, they've given us big N, the number of molecules, and we can work out the number of moles by doing big N over Na or L. So again, we've got our number of moles of HCl in brackets. So we have our physical number of molecules, 2.3 times 10 to the 23, and we divide that by Avogadro's number, which is 6.02 times 10 to the 23. My number of molecules had two significant figures, so my answer will have two significant figures, which is 0 0.38 mole. For B, calculate the number of atoms in 0 0.0025 mole of iron metal. Okay, well that one's using the formula from before. So one of the tricky things now is you have to work out which formula we're going to use. So this is one where we just sub in the number of moles times Avogadro's number. We've got the number of moles, 0 0.0025, which has two significant figures. The zeros before the number don't count. We multiply that by Avogadro's number, and we will get our number of atoms. 1.5 times 10 to the 21 atoms. Okay, C is a little bit different. Calculate the number of mole of hydrogen atoms in a sample of 5.10 times 10 to the 22 molecules of methane. To do this one, what we need to do is first we need to know the formula for methane, and it's in the bottom right hand corner down there, CH4. Now we need to work out the number of mole of methane. So we'll do the number of particles divided by Avogadro's number, which is 5.10 times 10 to the 22, divided by Avogadro's number, 6.02 times 10 to the 23. Here I've got three significant figures. Both numbers have three significant figures, so I can be accurate to three significant figures. 0 0.0847, and the unit is mole. Now that's the number of moles of methane. So to work out the number of moles of hydrogen, we have to look at the formula. The ratio between carbon and hydrogen is 4 to 1, or 1 to 4. So we have 4 times as much hydrogen in these molecules as we do for carbon. So to find the number of moles of hydrogen, we multiply the number of moles of methane by 4, because it's a 4 to 1 ratio. For every one molecule of methane, we have four molecules of hydrogen. Topic one, volume three, some top tips. You need to know when to use the n equals little n times na equation, and think of big N, the number, as counting particles. Practice using your calculator, practice keeping the numbers in there, and rounding at the end. This whole topic has some calculator skills in it. Thanks for watching guys, don't forget, drop a like on the video, subscribe if you're new, and I'll see you.